We're gonna go up the mast, we're going to remove the old steel stay, and then we're going to attach our new synthetic stay. So we're going up, we're gonna hoist ourselves up with a gant line, and then do all the work, and then come back down. So this whole process to replace the stay from steel to synthetic uses one trip up the mast. So you're gonna take the top of the stay up with you, and you're gonna attach it up there. All right, we are now up the mast, we're at the tangs for the inner four stay and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to unhook the old stay that's made of steel we're going to tie it to something because the sucker is really heavy so you don't want to just let it fall because it'll hurt stuff on your deck i mean let alone if it hits someone they're dead so you don't want to do that after that is off we then hook up our new one with steel rigging you have to be mindful and you always need to have toggles because you have the tang that comes down and can pivot this way but you have no ability to pivot this way. So that's where the toggle comes in, because now the stay can go side to side and up and down. So it can move in a universal joint, and then you're less likely to get stress cracks. Now with synthetic rigging, you don't have to worry about stress cracks because you're not using steel rigging, but you do have to be concerned about chafe. A couple points to make. So we have the synthetic stay comes up and goes to the toggle, and its thimble is here with the clevis pin holding it, and that goes to a tang which goes to the mast. We have this service here, so this is a Dyneema line that's wrapped super tightly around it. Now it's got a little bit of a kink in it, but that'll straighten out when it goes under load. And then we have chafe sleeve down here. Now, the reason that we have all this is because the halyard is right behind it. So you have the halyard here, so when the halyard is too blocked because the sail's up, it's sitting right here, so they're really close to each other. So you want this area to be extra protected against chafe. So that's the other reason why we have the toggle here is to make sure that the eye is in this plane and not this way. So the eye is protected and is further away from everything so it's less likely, less likely to get chafe. So now that it's all buttoned up here, we're gonna head back down and get it hooked up down below. Touchdown. Now that we have the stay hooked up and connected at the top of the mast, we're gonna finish making the stay properly. So to connect everything, we have four pieces. We have a toggle, turnbuckle, and then a dead eye and lashings. So the goal is to be using just the turnbuckle, but in order to get the stretch out, we're going to be using a dead eye and the lashings. So the plan's really simple. We set up the turnbuckle, attached to the dead eye, and then with the lashings, we just tie it off hand tight we don't really force it if you guys haven't seen a video about how to tension your rigging using only dead eyes you should check it out right here now in that video it shows how long and tedious it is to do just lashings like it is so much work if you can use a turnbuckle use a turnbuckle if you can't afford a turnbuckle you're going to be condemned to doing a lot of work and tying a whole bunch of knots it's a very lengthy process so to make life easier i'm using a turnbuckle here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it as tight as we can with the turnbuckle fully open. Then we tighten the turnbuckle, get the stretch out. When we get the turnbuckle too blocked, we loosen it, we tighten the lashing again, and then we two block the turnbuckle. And we just keep going over and over until everything is tightened down. Once we get the stay so that it's stretched all the way, then we can pull the chafe sleeve down and get that part finished up. You can see this huge gap here that we have to close down now. Our final length that we're shooting for is 24 inches from the chain plate to the loop. We're, uh, we're pretty far away from that, so we gotta go bringing it in. setup we don't have to do the crazy mechanical advantage system that we did with just dead eyes because we have the mechanical advantage of the turnbuckle so now that we have it all tied up we're just going to tighten this down and that's going to make everything nice and tight that's going to then stretch out the rigging and i'll show you how to stretch the rigging in just a second we're just going to get this two blocks which literally means you tighten them until the two blocks hit. So in this case, it's when the bottle screws come in and are all the way in. 
then you're done. So this is how you get constructional stretch out. Now it's tight, like if I pull on this, it's pretty tight. So I'm just gonna weigh on it really hard. And now it's super slack. So now we just loosen this, tighten it up again, and repeat the process. So now we have it all opened up. So this is actually the length that it was. So last time, this was as tight as I could get it, and now we're gonna pull it in just by hand. We get it nice and tight again, and then we'll just tie it off. And then we'll repeat the process with the turnbuckle. It's pretty straightforward. Now that we're starting to get a lot of excess tail, I'm not gonna do that normal knot that I do. I'm just gonna do a bunch of half hitches just to give it some friction. We'll just tie it off. So this isn't really holding the rigging. This is just holding slippage right now. So once again, the stay is super tight. Like I cannot get the, the turnbuckle is hard to turn. It is that tight. So we're just gonna grab on here and just put your weight into it. Just push and pull. And that'll just work the stretch right out of it. Now I almost got all the stretch out and I've almost got the chafe sleeve covering everything. So I'm almost there. <sighs> now you might be asking, is there a way that you could do this so that you don't have to suffer through this right now where you're just yanking and pulling and hoping to stretch the thing out? And the answer is yes. So back in the States, when I do this normally, I use a pickup truck and I tie the stay to a tree and then I drive an F-150 that weighs about 7,000 pounds down a hill, not exceeding five miles an hour because you're going to come to a very abrupt stop. So if you're going really fast, you might hurt the truck. Usually I just put it in neutral and just let it go. And it gets up to speed and then when, when the stay goes tight, it yanks it and you have a 7,000 pound truck stopping instantly. And that puts so much load on it so fast and hard that it just snaps everything into place. And that is actually how I tensioned, or got the stretch out of all our rigging before we put it on. The problem is I'm here in Spain. I don't have my pickup here. I do actually have the most powerful, robust vehicle ever because it's a rental. So with full coverage insurance, but being how it's a European car, there actually is no strong point that I could tie the stay to and drive away from. It's very frustrating because I searched that car so much so here i am just yanking away but if you're at home and you have access to a vehicle and a very very strong tree and it's important the tree be strong because you don't want to pull the tree over and crush your car that would suck so don't do that that's a dumb idea that would be bad make sure the tree is strong i personally used a really old silver maple that was in my parents yard because that sucker was huge and not going anywhere but you know pick a tree accordingly maybe ask an expert on trees which tree you should uh tire synthetic standing rigging to and drive away and see how fast it'll stop your car. Now once you have it down to this point where the stay comes down and it's too blocked to the dead eye, it's time to switch things up. So if you've noticed, I've been using a really, really small turnbuckle with the dead eye and that's because they're very close in size to the actual turnbuckle we're going to be using. So the small turnbuckle with the dead eye was just a tiny bit bigger than the big turnbuckle without a dead eye. And this is the turnbuckle we're gonna be using. So all we had to do was get the constructional stretch out to the point that we could finally get the proper and the correct turnbuckle that we're gonna be using onto here. So we're almost there. So I'm gonna show you guys how to bridge the gap. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're actually gonna untie all of this. But we're gonna keep using the lashing just for a moment. It's just to help bridge that gap. So, so we're just gonna loosen everything up get this taken apart and then get our next turnbuckle put on. So at this point we've taken in the turnbuckle a lot so we've gotten more stretch out of it. Okay so now we've gotten more constructional stretch out of it and you can see it's pretty loose and we've taken in a lot of turns on the turnbuckle. So now when we extend the turnbuckle again it should reach to get the clevis pin into the eye of the ice plate. Now that we've gotten the turnbuckle to finally reach the eye, 
we have the clevis pin in there it's all done all we have to do now is tension it and get any last little bit of stretch out of it and with that we have a fully synthetic stay attached and tensioned only with a turnbuckle so it's just like stainless steel rigging except that you don't have any of the negatives of stainless steel rigging and you get all of the positives of synthetic rigging now that you have your stay fully tensioned and everything the last step is going to be to pin up your turnbuckle now the problem with the normal way to pin off a turnbuckle is that it's either going to a not work or b stab you and like stab everything and it's just it's very stabby you don't want to do that it's really bad instead of a cotter pin i use stainless steel seizing wire and the reason i do it is i can make a much safer and much more secure form of attachment to retain the turnbuckle and make sure that it a can't turn and b can't snag on anything now with a cotter pin you either make sure that it won't snag on anything or won't let the turnbuckle turn you can't have both but with seizing wire you can so with that the turnbuckle is properly seized it cannot turn and everything is flush and smooth so it won't snag on anything because this being the inner force stay has the lazy sheet for the jib laying across it on every tack so it's really important that everything on the front of this guy be as smooth as possible that way nothing gets snagged and nothing gets caught now that we have the stay completely finished the last thing you need to do if you're doing a head stay is attach your sails you have to bend them on somehow now being how this is synthetic you can't use bronze hanks because bronze hanks they're a little harsh on it so you need to switch to soft tanks and my personal favorite soft tanks are made out of dyneema so they look like soft shackles but they're really small because they're to hank on a sail a soft tank has to replicate the size of a hank which is only about two inches long so they're really small now once you have the head stay switched and you're going to attach your old hank on sail back onto the stay it's gonna be an issue you have bronze hanks on your old sail you need to have soft hanks on the sail to attach it to a synthetic stay so first you have to do the dirty work of literally cutting your old bronze hanks off you can try to pry the tongue up and open up the hank and slide it off the sail but i can tell you it's really hard to do that and it's so much easier to just take a hacksaw and just chop them off and with that you have your head sail completely hanked on with soft shackles so it's not going to do any damage to the denima now you might be wondering, well, what about the soft shackles? Can they get damaged? And yes, just like all hanks can get damaged and wear out, you have to inspect them, make sure they're still in good shape. But being how it's Dyneema on Dyneema, it's not too much of an issue with chafe. Now the Dyneema headstay is actually covered in a chafe sleeve made from Dyneema. So you have Dyneema on Dyneema on Dyneema. It's fine. So just keep an eye on it, make sure nothing's wearing out. And if anything does start to wear out, the problems are just going to manifest themselves as simple chafe. So if you start seeing chafe, you know it's time to do a little work on it and just maybe change how something's set up or just replace a part before it wears out completely. So with that, the head stay is completely converted. This is now a fully synthetic head stay with Hank on sails and it was super easy to do. So I hope you found this video series informative on how to convert your steel rigging to synthetic rigging and all the parts that are involved in it the whole way through from start to finish. Now if you found this helpful, you could help spread the word to other sailors who are maybe thinking about doing this but you know th there's all these questions they have and they haven't figured out how to get them answered yet and maybe share this video series with them that way more people can learn about synthetic standing rigging and how easy it is to do it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.